Good evening, fans. This is Shake Master J with another Drake Appreciation Day review. As you all remember, this is the review of Drake's fourth mixtape. If you're reading this, it's too late. Drake, a Toronto rapper who's coming in with just a couple of years and blowing up in three um, with mixtape after mixtape after mixtape finally catching the attention of Young Money with a little affiliation although they were not signed and, but finally after a while of touring and putting him on and getting a good deal with the help of the Prince family of course Drake has been able to secure his spot in the mainstream, the industry, letting each figurehead take him in with Thank Me Later. You know, an album that was okay, but, you know, came and went. Take Care, which was an album that was here to stay. And then you have Nothing Was The Same, which was a pretty good album. Um... For Drake doing the numbers it did and Drake you know experimenting more as he is changing the style he, or if anything developing his own sound as his career progresses um, so now we have this project if you're reading this it's too late which the contrary to popular belief you know, first and foremost, I want to just go out and say, fuck cash money, y'all real, y'all some real, real, real trifling ass dudes for doing this. Um, apparently, Drake wanted to release this mixtape for free by putting this on datpiff.com, but it was quickly intervened by cash money, so no work couldn't have been done because of that. But either way, you, it was released out of nowhere because despite that, we didn't know anything. Because this was around the time that Wayne was having problems with cash money and yada, 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 you know. So as this was, as this was happening, pretty much we didn't know anything so as this mixtape was unexpectedly released much of no one's knowledge as Drake tried to pull a Beyonce where he tried to release it out of nowhere um, there have been some songs around 2014 that were released like Six God which is on the mixtape but other tracks which weren't like Heat of the Moment and I believe there was one more I cannot remember. Oh, How About Now was also a release track. And My Side too. Um, Some of these were bonus tracks. I believe Jodeci was another track with J. Cole. But I think I mentioned that on the Nothing Was The Same video. But either way, Drake was just releasing some nice, small, you know, tracks. But he was really doing a lot of features or as DJ academics would say he would give off the stimulus packaging just to see who would make it whose career would blow whose song would chart da 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 you know the works um that being said with this mixtape coming out of nowhere especially it being left field the question was how will this mixtape do? <coughs> and the answer to that is quite simple. It does phenomenal. Like this mixtape is one hell of a mixtape if it's not a good mixtape. Um it's one thing we all know. It's one thing we as hip hop fans know. Even those that don't like Drake. A lot of people have said Drake's mixtapes are a lot better than his albums. And this proves it. 
you know you have Drake in this mixtape with a lot of production with a lot of bangers a lot of slow introspective beats not necessarily moody except now and forever but anything else is a little bit more calm and somber how about now is kind of a moody track too but everything else is just light and cool I want to say the second half of Preach is as moody, but not as moody as you think. No, Star 67, sorry. That was the second half of Star 67 has a nice moody beat. But other than that, majority of this is just hard bangers, hard introspective beats. And there's one track in particular, uh, 6 p.m. in New York, where Drake is like really rapping on a boom bap beat um some of these lyrics the lyrical content on this album is like i said not really other than 6 p.m in new york not really as you know hard hitting lyrics or braggadocious lyrics or flowing lyrics or drake spitting it's more drake just putting words together to make a trap beat or putting words together to make a catchy catchy memorable lines in the songs themselves which actually do a good job as he does this you know you have these songs where drake is talking about obviously strippers not a lot compared to his early works of course but you know he's talking about strippers he's talking about trust issues specifically on energy where he's like there's people there's rappers that he has to act like he likes But since he's no longer an actor anymore, you know, what's the point? You know, and and this is where, you know, you see more of Drake's braggadocia start to embellish himself. Start to really, really take over his persona. If anything, it's this mixtape right here. And yes, Back to Back came out afterwards, you know. But even then... You could just fuse it with the album because what Back to Back did was just kind of got everyone to go back to this album again or this mixtape again. And the fact that this is happening, you see now that this mixtape right here solidifies Drake's status as a top tier rapper, as a top tier hip hop artist in this culture. This does that. You, you this, the production here, you know, done by Noah, obviously forty, uh, Boy Wonder, longtime con- collaborators, as well as Drake himself. You know, you got Quentin Miller, Anderson, you know, vinyls, a lot of musical contradict, a lot of mutual musical contributions. Party Next Door, obviously, you know, just so many people here doing their thing it's it's actually pretty amazing you know how this uh, it, 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 it's really amazing how this video how this mixtape is made now there's going to be a lot in this video as I keep going that I'm going to cover but for now overall like amazing mixtapes the the cons just really are minor is the lyrics as i said as i've said in my nothing what the same video this is where drake has taken more of a lyrical digression with the exception of 6 p.m in new york this is more of a lyrical digression where drake's just some just lazy rapping or rap singing or just flowing with the beat but that's just a minor and so minor it's not really a problem for me I get it. He's putting a song together. He's not just trying to be lyrical. He's trying to be a quote-unquote songwriter. And you see this. You see that where every time you'll see the memes. You'll see the quotes. Clearly Drake is doing a good thing as he's making these songs. So you'll have the memorable beats. The glittery beats. you have the Memphis beats. you have the Houston trap beats. You have a bit of the slower songs like Now and Forever, Company, 
you know, jungle, the Wednesday night interlude. And although used to is a more of a Memphis sound with a booming, booming trap beat, you have songs like, you know, Preach, which is more fast paced and about partying, you know, no telling, know yourself, especially know yourself. Let's not get started on the second half of Know Yourself. I mean, everyone knows the famous line, running through the six with my woes. Ten band, which is, you know, just a nice, nice glittery piano based beat with, uh, with some sense energy, which is the biggest song on this album. You know, the hook itself is so infectious. Then you have Legend on here. Which is everything, 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 but nothing short of amazing. And obviously you have the so anxious sample by Genuine in the fucking song. But he does a good job in separating the two, you know, lowering the voice. But the beat was just ugh. And Drake carries that beat. Does the same sample on Madonna, but makes it different. It's it's in and there's an un there's a longer version of the Madonna track that's on soundtrack that a lot of people didn't listen to. Cause it's on the album. There's only one verse, but the second version of Madonna is actually on SoundCloud somewhere. Apparently it's a little badly mixed. But either way. You know, as much as Drake has quote unquote lyrically digressed, they make for great, great, great music. And this is what Drake has said on the Elliot review, on the Elliot interview, that he's trying to go for a musical sound. He's not just trying to be a rapper, because if he wanted to, he could, but he's trying to be a musician at best. The other main minor con of this album really is just the fact that the features don't really do a standout job on here. Not I was not really a fan of Party Next Door, especially if I was introduced to him this way. I just was not a fan of Party Next Door on this. Whether he wrote it or not, I'm just not a fan of Party Next Door's featuring contribution to this. At all. Travis Scott. Uh, the first time I was introduced to Travis Scott. I wasn't really feeling him on this either. And uh, I could say Wayne's verse was okay. But you know. Drake really is the star of this mixtape as he should. That's why that's another minor setback. Really the major setback of this is just the fact that there will be a moment where the mixtape will drag and that will be after tracks like you know the slower tracks like Wednesday Night Interlude you'll see them slow down to a point where they start to drag but you hit jungle it picks up you know now I'm forever you'll know, be in company not really my favorite track you in the six where he talks about his mother his relationship with his mother not necessarily my favorite track i appreciate it and and love the concept but in execution eh you know my side also was kind of okay it's a bonus track for a reason so i didn't really feel my side in my opinion but how about now obviously one of my favorites um i mean I just named my least favorites, but my most favorite tracks are the whole and the majority of this mixtape. Really, there's not a track where I'm just kind of middle of the road to. Um, and that gives you to the pros, as I mentioned, the bangers. I've mentioned the Houston sound with the meth, the Houston and the Memphis style mixed together. I already talked about the trap beats. Um, I talked about the braggadocious concert content braggadocious lyrical content mixed with the 
introspective content. You know, obviously with Legend, where Drake's talking about his legendary status. And then you have, you know, the ending of the mixtape, the, the, if it's a Spotify or iTunes version, with 6 p.m. and mix, 6 p.m. in New York, where Drake is just coming at Tiger, you know, subliminally. But he says some very powerful words like the little, little homie. That's way more powerful than you need to act your age and not your girl's age because, you know, look at Travis Scott. Um, you know, the fact that he called you the little, little homie. He's talking about you leasing cars and downgrading houses. Oh, no, that's some powerful lines right there, bro. Who People who tell me that Drake cannot deliver a diss track. Yeah, Common caught him on a bad day. You know, Common gets the victory because of that. This is this is chess moves, not checkers. But, you know, there are moments where Drake has shown many people that Drake knows how to expose people. You know what I mean? So, is this, this is another one. This is another one. But, before I get into the official rating, because that's my overall thoughts on this mixtape. Um, that's my dissection of the mixtape. Let's get into what became after the mixtape. And this is the unpopular opinion section of the mixtape. Now, we all know after the mixtape, Drake went on to, you know, blow up. You know, the mixtape did numbers after more promotion of such and whatnot. Didn't do Beyonce numbers as he thought, but as the mixtape started getting promoted, then it started slowly getting more successful out of it. Um, later on, during the whole Meek Mill situation, the back-to-back, the charged up, the want to know, all that nonsense, the Twitter... The Twitter, whatnot. Meek Mill eventually ended up exposing Drake on Twitter, you know, by doing one of the dumbest things that I've said on the Logic and Join Your Lucas video. Don't compare me to Drake. Drake, don't write his own rhymes. Look, the whole going on Twitter saying he didn't tweet my blah, blah, blah. It was whatever. It's one thing to say that. But my biggest problem. I hate when rappers go on their platform and say, I don't compare me to such and such, when clearly no one is comparing you to such and such. My advice, if you really don't like the person and you want to expose the person, get right into the meat and potatoes. Do not tell people not to compare you to nobody because we're not comparing you to nobody you guys are way too different in styles to be doing that. If Kendrick were to come out and say, don't compare me to Drake, it would make sense. If Drake were to say, don't compare me to Kendrick, it would make sense. Me coming out and saying this does not make sense. Maybe we're comparing you in terms of, you know, new school artists that's booming in hip hop. But other than that, uh, no. No, we're not compare. We're comparing you as a group, but we're not comparing you two individually. Stop it, Robert. Stop it. But other than that, what's what the 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 highlight of these tweets as he was going on these rants were Drake being exposed as a musician who does not write his rhymes. Now, obviously, people heard that, and you know. Forget what Safari was doing. Forget the whole VMA situation. You know, with the with, with Nicki Minaj and Taylor and Swift. And I don't give a fuck if I was more focused on this than Sandra Bland. Y'all Black Lives Matter people need to get out your asses with that shit. If it was entertaining, the shit was entertaining. I'm paying attention. Okay? I'm sorry that y'all didn't appreciate that. But do not kill my day with that BS. Anyway, back to the video. The highlight of this whole situation as this was going on in the month of July 2015 was the accusation of Drake writing his rhymes. That was the more important of such. Um, people... 
people paid attention to those rumors and then the next day Drake's accusations started to get more physical in proof as it was alleged that DJ Drama leaked out the alleged Quentin Miller reference tracks from 10 Bands, Know Yourself, and the Rico track that Drake did on the Meek Mill album, um, and also the, I want to, be, I want to say, there was a Blessings reference track that Drake did on Big Sean's Dark Sky Paradise. Um, we didn't hear that one, but some of these reference tracks with the exception of Legend, were not credited. Quentin Miller has went on and talked about his state, saying blah, 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 you know, reference track, and there went Quentin, Quentin Miller's career in OVO, up in smoke. <laughs> um... My thoughts on that is very simple, you know. Actually, you know what? Before I give my full thoughts, I have to finish um, what happened afterwards. So, you know, Drake dropped charged up, blah, blah, blah. Me was quiet about it. Um, Then Hotline Bling came out. Obviously, this was a single to Drake's. This was the biggest single to Drake's, you know fourth album views but we'll get to that in another video but as hotline with hotline bling was dropping a lot of people claimed that this was a ripoff off of drums cha-cha um i didn't hear cha-cha so i'm not really going to talk about too much but meek mill leaked that claim out and further hurting drake's you know credibility as a hip-hop artist and because of that Drake ended up dropping back to back. Now, my thoughts on this has always been very simple. Who the fuck cares? The only people who really care about Drake not writing his rhymes are people who don't like Drake. Period. People who just don't like Drake are the only people who don't care about, or the only people who care about this. Charlemagne said on the breakfast interview, and it just sums it up. Don't matter. No one cares about who is cooking the food. It's about who's serving the food. They love them waitresses. With these leaks of Drake, all it's going to prove is that it's another reason to dislike Drake. If you don't like Drake, this will just be a reason to dislike Drake. Otherwise, people are just going to support Drake regardless of whether he writes his rhymes or not. And let's be in it. Let's be honest, people. Do y'all really care if Quentin Miller would be the one singing this track? Let be very honest. Let's say if you're reading this is too late was a mixtape that was released by Quentin Miller and not Drake. Are y'all really going to care? I didn't think so. And here's why this is more. Here's why only people that don't like Drake care about this mixtape and not people who are fans. Because Baca had a hit song that was big in Canada. And the reference track was made by Drake. Yeah. And uh, because of that, people literally said, and I remember this on Academics page here. Sounds better than Drake. Sounds a lot better than Drake. In other words, no one cares that Bacchus, no one cares that Drake wrote this. Drake literally wrote this, and they felt that Baca did it better. Uh, 
That's interesting. And now Baca's considered as a pick for the freshman list. I want to see him freestyle since he got Drake right in his rhymes. Yeah. Um, you know, then you have Safari who initially, I think he apologized now, but initially he was making claims that, you know, Nikki was doing, he was doing all these collaborations with Nikki. He had, he was writing rhymes for Nikki. Before Safari started really getting recognition because of his penis. Good job, Safari. I'm on your side for this. Um, people were calling him a cornball. People weren't looking at Safari as this lyrical god and all this nonsense. Hell, at one time, people were saying they'd rather hear Nicki Minaj than Safari rap. That's gotta hurt. But that's neither here nor there. I mean, now, as Nikki's falling back, you know, people are now saying, oh, wow, Safari may have right for Nikki, blah, blah, blah. But let's be honest. Y'all really going to support Safari now? Exactly. I will support Safari. But let's not act like y'all will. With that being said, Quentin Miller is just some guy to make fun of Drake with. He's nobody you're going to be listening to. I don't hear nobody listening to Quentin Miller. You know, and people were quick to listen to Drum and X when they talked about how Drake stole their songs as opposed to a guy that actually wrote for Drake. Quote unquote. You know. And Diaries was right on the Breakfast Club. 90% of this industry, if not 75. They don't write their rhymes either. Just saying. That's a whole different ball game. Instead, I'll let Carcino talk about it. The link will be in the description. He gets in detail about ghostwriters and all that. And uh, Superhead, ironically. I mean, obviously, her name. But she, for her name. But, yo, she's been around dudes in the industry. She talks about ghostwriting, too. That'll be in the description as well. But overall, my feelings on the whole ghostwriting situation, I don't care. Do I think Drake is lyrical? Absolutely. I think he still belongs in that. I'm, I mean, I think he still belongs in that top 10 list with, you know, Kendrick and J. Cole and blah, blah, blah. It must hurt Drake to hear, you know, styles. You I mean, the whole locks not consider you a lyricism you know yeah it's one thing for Royce to say it but the whole locks I mean I'm pretty sure Drake's a fan of these dudes and them to say that you are not considered a Jedi Knight when someone's penning your shit bro people are putting you in the same category as Kanye West and P Diddy who are you know entertaining musicians but let's be honest there's a reason why Drake does not want to be in the same category as P Diddy because no one cares for P. Diddy. <laughs> no one cares for P. Diddy now. If anything, no one cared for P. Diddy since 2001. Like, we still listen to P. Diddy for rap music. Just like listening to Birdman for rap music. Exactly. No. P. Diddy is a music artist. He's a genius. Outside of his own music, he is. Um, P. Diddy, you know, is a business mogul. Everything. But nobody to his rhymes. No one wanna listen to him rap. But no one's gonna take him seriously. They know he's not a rapper. Get that out your head. And Kanye Kanye is actually a battle rapper. Like Kanye's a battle rapper, so people will still check for Kanye. Um he can freeze down, he can battle rap. Um it's just Kanye does his own thing. Um, even though he has Kendrick and certain people write rhymes from, but eh, it's whatever. Um, with that being said, Drake, do your thing. Obviously, there, Drake has cleared the air about that in his video with Zane Low One. I, I, I think that's the interview. I'm not too sure. He talks about the whole ghostwriting situation. You do lose points. Not on this mixtape, but you do lose points for me for, 
you know, going up and saying, you know, you don't know who X is when X has made it clear that he does, that you do. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Do your thing. Do your work. Fuck all these people who want to end your run. And I'm here to, to support you, bro. With that being said, this mixtape gets a 9 out of 10. Amazing, 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 legendary mixtape that put the game on hold that solidified your status in this industry. Like, this mixtape ultimately showed you that you are the big dog. And this is you at your top of your game. Salute, Aubrey. Salute. This is Shake Master J. If you want any reviews, any musical send me some musical stuff dm me on instagram i haven't gotten with everybody but i will make sure i listen to a lot of people i recommend you ask me to do a review on your mixtape i'll listen to it and i'll get into it and yeah that's how it is man um if you need some promo need some free promo you need some interviews you need all this stuff this is me just trying to come up off my own i got no backing i got no industry i got no nothing i don't mind taking it it's just right now you know obviously with no money I ain't got nothing, but support this blue snowball mic, actually black, but you, you get the point. It's black, this free audio PC recorder that fucks up on audio sometimes when something's running on the internet, and, um, you know, this cheap-ass Windows Live video editor. Well, I do actually have uh, Lightworks, but I'm going to have to figure that one out, but that's neither here nor there. Shake Master J. If you want anything more, if you want some criticism, comment on the, you know, comment on the comment bar. Subscribe. And if you want to hit the bell, that's up to you. Um, like, follow me on IG, Twitter, Facebook, two of my Facebook pages. And you can also message me on my email. Everything will be in the description bar. And without further ado, signing off with a crotch grab. Peace.